God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Welcome to Kingdom Life's online virtual church connection. Welcome to the services of God. We are glad that you came uh, to this uh, service. If you are the first time visitor, we want to extend to you a, a welcome and uh, know that this is a great place for you to come back and to connect with. We are excited that you stopped by for the first time. Hope it's not the last time. Come on into the sanctuary. Hallelujah. There's no distance in the spirit. There's no geographical uh, boundaries where the Holy Spirit cannot go. Uh, wherever you are, that's where he is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All we have to do is allow Him to come into our place, where, where wherever our location is at, whether that is in a car, in your backyard, in your basement, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, or whether that's on the job, in your office, or whether that's in a jail cell, whatever your geographical location is, there's no distance in the spirit. We may not be in a brick and mortar building, but where we are, the Holy Spirit is. And so don't dis, um, uh, disvalue this uh, virtual platform you can make wherever you are your sanctuary so i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord so the same anointing that exists in the brick and mortar building is the same anointing that can exist right here on this virtual platform so we are going to go right in the word of prayer father in the name of jesus we come before you as humbly as we know how we come with gratitude on in our hearts and a thank you on our lips to give you honor and to give you glory lord today we pray that your our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name we pray that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done in the earth as it been purposed in the heaven so father as we come before you today in this specific service father we pray that the anointing of god will go over these airways and that it will begin to saturate all of the places where you are sent father we thank you we ask and we pray decree and declare that the authority of the word of god will begin to take place in the lives of your people as i release this anointed word let it god be of their highest authority and once the word come forth help them to trust and believe in your word hallelujah and that it rank as supreme father we pray today that the word will fall into the good ground and into the soils of their heart so that it will begin to germinate and it will bring forth fruit into their lives father we pray for these your precious people who they are father we pray as they are uh, attending uh, this service on today and have destined themselves to be here and hear this word from your prophet we pray in the name of jesus that we will reach everyone where they are father god we pray that you know their needs and that you will hear the words and they will hear the words of the encouragement and the words of instruction and even the words of correction that is going to come through your word today and Father, we pray that you will let this word go viral, not because that I'm teaching it, but because it was intended to reach all of those who have been praying for an answer and in regard to uh, this specific subject. Father, we pray for your people. Minister to their needs. Minister, God, hallelujah, to even give them and let them know that if they abide in you, that you said you will give them the desires of their hearts. Father, the God of the breakthrough, we pray that you will visit every house that is represented here on today. Meet every needs. Let there be a breakthrough in their finance, a breakthrough in their health, a breakthrough in the, the situations in their families, a breakthrough in their mental health, a breakthrough, God, all the way around. God of the breakthrough, I decree and declare that you are visiting their house right now. Where they are weak, make them strong. Where, where they may be in error, correct their ways. And where they are discouraged, encourage their heart. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus today that you will begin to bind up the brokenhearted. That you will let the captives go free and you 
will bring liberty to those who are bound. Father, we pray today that all of the things in their lives that is shattered and in broken pieces, that you will bring those pieces back together again, that they may be whole and complete in you. You are able to do it in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will deliver them from all, um, from all anxiety, from depression, from stress, from mental illness, from worries, from strife. Hallelujah, Father, that you will begin to give them the audacity to hope again, those who have lost their hopes. And those who have hope in you, Father God, grow that hope in you. Father, we pray that they will begin and they will understand how to develop their faith. Hallelujah, to build their faith muscles so that they will have the tools necessary to continue on in the age that we are living in. Father, I pray that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened so that they may know what the hope of their calling is and that there they have in them the inheritance that you placed in them as being your children, as being your saints. Father, we pray that they would not be over anxious or in your word said, careful for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplications that they will make their requests made known unto you. And that if they make their requests known, let the confidence be that they, uh, that you hear them. And if you hear them, that they can have whatsoever things that they ask. Eradicate poverty in their lives. Father God, heal their sick and physical bodies. Hallelujah. May them uh whole and complete in you father now in the name of jesus we pray for this nation we pray for every elected officials on the federal level on the state level and even on the local level that you will begin to that we pray that they will operate in integrity and that they will do what is right in your sight father god that they will begin to transform this nation and to guide it into the right direction we don't know at the end of the day who is going to be sitting in the presidential seat but father we know that the spirit of corruption the spirit of violence and the spirit hallelujah of sabotage is at an all-time high father whoever is sitting in that seat help your people to understand what we have confessed before this 2020 that whoever is sitting in whatever seat that jesus is still king he is still lord and he still rules over all and that their uh, livelihood and that their prosperity is in you father we pray <clears throat> that the, uh, for our nation that you will help those elected officials hallelujah that they will begin to favor your righteous cause help them to administer justice help them to administer equality help them to minister a uh, uh, good policy making and legislate laws that is in accordance to your word father we pray for our nation that you will begin to we pray and we decree and declare and we buy social and unrest and we lose social rest we we bind violence and we lose peace and resolution we bind injustice and we lose justice we bind division and envy and strife and we lose collaboration hallelujah and harmony father we bind unfairness and we lose fairness in Jesus' name father we pray that you will begin to surround um uh, uh those in leadership with those in their um administration their assistance and those in uh their um and their surroundings and in their cabinets that you will begin to surround them with godly leaders that will give them proper and godly advice father we pray for the economy that you will begin to give them uh programs and strategies that will continue to grow this economy so that the unemployment rate will go down father god that the the um the economic status will begin to be healthy once again father we pray for the nation and we pray for all of these central workers that are under 
hallelujah, God, some straining hours, long hours, that they their stamina will be increased, that their mental health will stay intact. Father, that they will begin to be in good physical health. Cover them, hallelujah, and keep them from the virus and the disease as they are ministering to millions of people, God. Father, we pray for these essential workers that you will renew their mind, renew their physical stamina. In the name of Jesus, get them what they need, God. In the name of Jesus, you will encourage their heart to let them know that they are the ministers for yours right now. God, refresh them. Give them new, um, new, um, a fresh a fresh wind in the name of Jesus give them the understanding of how to administer to so many people at one time in the name of Jesus give them and every um, mental uh, uh, every I'm sorry every hospital and every uh, uh, health institution that is administering uh, health and the the cure to these people give them what they need give them correct ppes and in the name of jesus we pray and cover them now in the blood we pray for the business owners we pray for innovative ideas and concepts so that they business can begin to continue to grow hallelujah pray that their their streams of income will not diminish that their streams of income matter of fact will be increased as they are going back to the table you're giving them ideas of how to continue their business in this new normal age god father cover their families hallelujah as they are going through this transition hallelujah let them resources that they need come to their door and help them to eat and understand during this time that this is a time that they can reflect that they need to know how to do business as your way where they have been unfair to their employees help them to understand the value of treating their employees in the right way father we just pray for the nation at all we pray for all of those who have suffered any type of loss that you're regaining them back to you and father we pray that all of their hearts those who don't know you would be their hearts would begin to be turned toward you during these difficult times so that they can rely on the only thing that is going to be able to carry them through these troubling times. Now I pray for this service. Holy Spirit, you take control. Walk up and down these aisles and do what you want to do. Let the anointing go over these airways and to saturate them where they are. Let the authority of the word affect their lives. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips so that the word of God will go forth unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. All these things that we have prayed. Hallelujah. Believing what we have prayed that we receive. We receive it to be so. This we pray. This we believe. And this we receive. And this we call it all done. In the majesty and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you people of God. Um, now we're going to go through our scripture reading. Go to if you if you want to follow along, the scripture reference is found in Psalms chapter one number one thirteen, and we're going to read all of those verses, verses one through nine. Then we will go expeditiously into the Word of God. Hallelujah! This is a a a, um, a chapter. In Psalms that you can meditate on later because it's very good. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that how it starts off already. Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> Come on, I invoke you to praise the Lord. I compel you to praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever. The name of the Lord is going to forever be blessed. Let's bless his name. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. So that means that we should never cease giving praise to the Lord. So as sure as the sun rise and the going down of that same sun go sun goes down in the evening uh, 24 7 365 days it is appropriate that the name of the lord be praised it is fitting that the name of the lord be praised it is um 
of your benefit that the name of the Lord be praised. Verse 4, the Lord is high. high. Oh, glory be to God. I'm thanking him that he is high above all the nations and his glory, hallelujah, is above the heavens. Hallelujah. Who is like unto our God? That's the question I pose to you today. If you don't even know the Lord, I still pose this question to you. Who is like unto our God? We can search all over. We can go to the heaven above. It says, and to the earth beneath, David said. And if I go there, God is there. And if I there is none like him in the heavens above or the earth beneath, who is like unto our God? Who dwells on high? So it's telling us his position, telling us that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. So he dwells on high. His eyes are in every place. He's beholding all of this that's going on. He's beholding the good and the evil, and he has his people in mind. So who, verse 5, is like unto the Lord our God who dwell on high, who humbled himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raises up the poor out of the dust and he lifted the needy up out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. So even God cares about those, hallelujah, who is the poor, those who are the needy. He cares about the barren woman. He's going to make her a happy household. And, and it says she's barren, meaning she can't have any kids. But the one who praises the Lord, he will make that barren woman to keep house. Hallelujah. Or to be a good homemaker and, and to be a good, joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Glory be to God. Come on, I feel like giving God some praise. Hallelujah, God, we worship you. We give you glory. We magnify you, Lord. We extol you. You're good, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. We crown you as majesty, Lord. How Excellent is your name in all the earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Glory be to God. Yes, you want to feel like shouting and dancing, go right ahead. And if I had some music right now, some shouting music that I can play that I have right to, I will play it. Play. Let me slow down. I will play it right now and give y'all a praise break. Glory be to God. That's how good God is. Yes, in the midst of these bad times. Yes, in the midst of trouble time. Stop looking at these times. This, it was predicted, prophesied that they were going to come. But you got to get yourself into the truth of the word and understand during these times what place he said you're supposed to be in. So we're going to talk about some of that today. Glory be to God. So we are in part two of our series. Uh, shifting gears by way of introduction my name is pastor betty i am senior pastor and the proud senior pastor of kingdom life christian center uh, located on the northwest side of chicago illinois glory be to god and welcome to our virtual online church connection right here on youtube if you would do me a favor can you hit the subscribe button if you like what you're hearing subscribe to our channel also click on the notification so that you may be notified every time we are putting up our Sunday morning service. Also, we just don't put Sunday morning services on there. We also put kingdom nuggets as we are led by the Holy Spirit. So you can be notified of those. Also, share this and let someone know that there is a good word that is being uh, delivered through Kingdom Life Christian Center with Pastor Betty. And I am a pastor who is teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. This church is a safe place, a safe environment. It is a church where Jesus Christ, the center of focus, and the word of God, no opinion, 
The word of God is our highest authority. We will welcome you to come and join Kingdom Life Christian Center. We are loved by God. That's our motto. So we decide to give love away. This church mission is to win the loss for Jesus Christ and to empower and equip the believer. How do we do that? Various means. I'm not going to rehearse our whole mission statement, but our mandate is to birth out people, to then incubate them if they need incubating, those who already been birthed and have been hurt or or came with or you got some dis spiritual disability we're gonna if you come here we're gonna incubate you we're not gonna throw you away and say you need to be over there no we're gonna incubate you then we're gonna nurture you we're gonna feed you good nutritional food through the word of god then we're gonna uh, uh, nurture you we're gonna equip you we're gonna empower you and then we're gonna mature you up and then we're gonna launch you out so that you can be doing the kingdom work so that's what our mandate is and if that sounds good to you and you would like to become part of kingdom life christian center we would love to have you now through this but we've been trying to do this for years and we've been saying that we're going to launch ourselves um uh, uh over um the globe if we could internationally domestically whoever wanted to come underneath this ministry and had been inquiring about how to do that we was trying to launch a virtual online church but when this all hit this pandemic and things like that um, we were um, just catapulted into this virtual um, platform and the Holy Spirit said you were already going that way so now we're not going to discontinue this once things go back to normal we're going to continue this virtual platform for those who wanted to come underneath this ministry but who may not be locally uh, here or uh, maybe overseas or or some something is hindering you from being on site we're making this a virtual place for you to become a member Yes, and we have those processes. And if you want to know more about how to become a member, a full-fledged member of Kingdom Life Christian Center virtually, because doing it virtually is a challenge. So we got to have some things in places and we got to have some procedures in places. And we do have that and we want you to uh, contact us and we'll let you know what that is. But going right now into the Word of God, think through my mind, Holy Spirit, speak through my lips so that the Word of God will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force. So we're in Shifting Gears Part 2. And so what we're doing, we're using the natural illustration of a car vehicle and all of the, the four uh, gear modes, if you will, that a car operates under. If you missed Part 1, I encourage you to go back to Shifting Gears Part 1, listen to the definitions and look at, listen to some foundational things that we um, started on there. But I give you a quick definition of some of these words and then we have to move on for the sake of time. You know, excuse me for picking in mind, but something is right down. I wanted to fall in there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So shifting gears and so we are taking a natural illustration of shifting of gears in a car and we're going to um, uh, show you a spiritual truth and talking about shifting gears in regard to our personal lives into our spiritual lives how we are to shift gears what are the gears um, in relation to this car how can they relate to our life and what are those gears trying to tell us and what is the operational uh, part of each of those gears and how we can relate that to our lives. So when we're talking about shifting gears, we're talking about um, to move or to cause to move something from one place to another. That's what the word shift means. To cause to move from one place to another, one position to another. Also, usually shifting uh, like in a manual transmission car, they do the, that shifting like that. It's usually small movements that shift that car's transmission from one gear to the next. In an automatic vehicle though, what most of us are used to, the, it's more of a switching gear because we can go uh, from park to drive. We can go from drive to reverse. So it's usually more of a larger type of shifting of a position or gear so we switch 
or we change suddenly or completely from one position to the next. Whereas shifting, it calls for a minor adjustment to go from one position to the next. So you'll see how that comes into play later. A gear is like a, a gear is a set of two wheels that work together to alter the relationship now between uh, the speed of that dry, driving mechanism. Uh, such as a vehicle and then the speed of the driven parts of the wheels and so when you're shifting the gear it the engine is started when you put the key in the ignition, and then also then it goes through the transmission then the transmission and those shifting of those gears tell the wheels what to do stay park means stop be in the neutral zone where, where the wheels are still able to move but not at a driving uh, a stage and then also whether it should go reverse or forward and so when I was uh, looking at this Holy Spirit said then you can kind of use this illustration to bring out how this works in the each individual lives because each of those gears have their specific use and they uh, function uh, differently some in our in our life now being we have been in one of these types of gears and I'll explain a little bit later the gears I'll break it down but we have been in one of these types of gears some time in our life you may not be there now but you have been there some of us has been in that neutral zone where we care less we didn't want to make a decision one way or another um, it's almost like we got to the point of things got so heavy and you, you got so tired of trying to debate or whatever you went into that neutral zone then we've been in the part where instead of going forward we've been going backward we went into the reverse mode and we also have been in that park mode where we have been standing still not because God told us to but we just been stagnated and standing still and then most definitely the mode we've been in that drive mode where we are active we are moving forward we're going forward so then when uh, God gave me this. He said, I want you to break this down into parts because I can't give you all, all of this that I got on this paper. So we're going to be talking about the shifting of gears in our life in regard to shifting our priorities, shifting our paradigm, shifting our um, focus, shifting of our agenda. And so it is time, as he said, in this last hour, in this last dispensation that I always talk about, the sixth, the number six, TH, sixth uh, uh, dispensation. Dispensation only mean, mean age or time frame. We're in the sixth dispensation. We're in the sixth out of seven. There are seven dispensation, but the sixth dispensation is almost the final because it is the dispensation of the church. The dispensation of the grace. And that's where we end right now. When this dispensation end, it's going to usher us into the seventh dispensation, which is the time where the church is going to be gone and raptured. The, that thing called grace is going to be kind of uplifted. It's going to be the seventh dispensation when there's going to be the time where. Um, it's going to be time for God's people now, their second chance. It's going to be the second advent of our Christ coming here, and the church is going to be gone. So it's basically, um, we're in the sixth. We don't know the time, nor the hour. We don't know how long that's going to be. But there are pointers that is telling us, giving us signals. They're the, the, the weather patterns, the, the sky, and the, um, I would say the atmosphere different things even our society things that's happening right now y'all think it's just happening just because that this happened and this brought this into play these things have been prophesied that's why i keep saying some things we can pray we can decree and declare and do all of that but some things it may not sound right i don't got time right here if you want to know more or ask me more questions send me an email klcc1207 but i'm going to say this phrase and 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 it's, it's kind of deep so i want to just tell you that a lot of stuff that is happening even currently um there are some things we can do about it and then there are some things that we are limited
only because of the fact that it has to happen because it is it has been prophesied in the word of God so we can pray and make better use of it and we can pray to change things around to put it into alignment that work in our favor or to put it uh, where um, it makes what we have to do in our assignment accomplishable that we can accomplish it and that the promises of God are uh, about us is still going to be the same that means that it can be happening but not affecting us but certain things that we are trying to pray away people of God let me just say this I don't have time to spend here that's why I don't like to say things like this when I don't have time to spend because I like to always when I say something give you all the full understanding but let me just say it like this but um, some things have been prophesied just like in the Old Testament, it prophesies Jesus' time. It had to happen that way. And so, so what am I saying? Some of these things, perilous times, famines, pestilence, mothers against daughters, fathers against sons, uh, love of people waxing cold, not knowing the times or the seasons, unless we look at the trees, everything being out of co its course, the earnest expectation of creation is moaning and groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. Uh, all of these things found in Matthew starting at 24th chapter through the 26th chapter tells us about these end times. So, so we can, we can, um, I'm not going to go there because I'll be going into the explanation. But I'm saying some things are just prophetic. And at the end, they got to come to pass. They are going to come to pass because he said so. He just told us and gave us a warning to not to be dismayed, not to be sorrowful, not to act like the world, not to get all upset and anxious and and, and uh, full of stress and and discouragement and losing our faith and let our faith waver he says cause for you people of God understand this that this is just the beginning of sorrows just meaning the beginning of the birth pains that 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 the earth will be travailing and it will be in the birth pain, pains in this last hour but we're supposed to just take these things and then become effective become more productive, become a transformational of uh, uh, people, that we can transform these things and, and bring people into the gospel. This is not even in my message, but but so with that being said, so we got to, in this last hour, if you don't know, it is time for the church to recognize and evaluate what gear we are in, what gear are we operating in, is it, is it right where God wants us to be or is it time to shift? And I know it's time to shift because he gave it to me and told me to teach it that it's time to shift gears. Some of us been in the wrong gear way too long. All of us have been in some of those gears and they are appropriate for certain times. But some of us are getting stuck into those gears. We've been in that gear way too long and it's time to shift. Oh, glory be to God. I felt that. And he said, these are the things that it's time for them to shift in. It's time for shift in their priorities, in their focus, in their paradigm, and in their agenda. Glory be to God. And each one of these are going to be a, a part to this series. Because I don't have time to do justice to each one of these in this one series. So today, what I want to do is go with you into the four gears and to, I'm going to give you the natural gear and how it operates and then it, it's not parallel exactly how the motor vehicle operates, how we supposed to be in these gears and operate but it's just an illustration to relate to. So the first one is when we are in uh, the driving gear and so um, give me a minute. I got my paper. I got a lot of papers here. <laughs> oh, glory. It's a God. I love it. I love that. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's see. Do I got it here? Do I got it? Do I got it? Okay. Oh, I thought I had that. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. All right. All 
All right, all right. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes, somebody say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Okay, that's not it. Hallelujah. You think I got everything together? And then, <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. If I don't find it, I'm going to move on with what I got right here. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just gonna go okay, so when we're talking about the different gears, first we talked about drive, right? So when you are when you're when the car is in the natural, I'm gonna do all the natural ones first, then we'll go to the spiritual. So when a car is in your drive mode, it is in um the forward moving mode, it is impelled or is urged to go move forward by force. When it's in the reverse mode, that means it's pertaining to a movement of that mechanism opposite uh, of what it was normally or or ordinarily the way it's supposed to run. So it's an ordinarily supposed to drive forward a car. But the reverse was made to go into the total opposite of where it normally runs. There is a purpose now sometimes for the reverse. And um, the reverse with natural speaking in a car, the reverse mode is used when we're trying to um, back up to get out of the way of something or to adjust in traffic. So, and it also is used uh, to... Um, Give me a minute. Uh, it's also used to back into a parking space. So that's what the reverse mode. But notice in that reverse mode, it's very dangerous. You can't drive in reverse too long without running the risk of running into something. And you really cannot drive in the reverse mode at any length of speed. Because if you've ever done it, the steering wheel shake and I backed up almost a half a block or sometime and it's very scary especially when two um, uh, on both sides of the streets there are cars and you have to be very slow and backing up you have to look at your rear, your rear view mirror you got to look at your um, side mirrors and sometimes you got to look over your shoulder just to be in the reverse mode it is a very dangerous mode to be in and it's only supposed to be designed to be used for minor adjustments just for short distances and for slower speed it is not the normal running gear of that car it is just for us to use it for adjustment that's how i look at it then we have the neutral zone and in that neutral zone in the car it is where that car is is at a as, as a place where um it's neither at a complete stop, neither it is in a forward movement. It's at the point where the wheels are not locked. And you can have some movement when someone is pushing that vehicle. For instance, if it when it got out of gas and it, we need to get you to the gas station, we what what do they do? They tell you to put it into the neutral neutral gear. And that neutral gear calls that car for the wheels to move. But notice that in the neutral gear. To move that car, I tried to do it. It looked easy when the guys was doing it. It was just rolling. I'm like, oh, I one time I stopped on my own. I'm going to push this. I tried to push that car. It wasn't going anywhere because it still it takes a lot of strength to move it because it's in that neutral. It's not, supposed, it's not at a stop, full stop, but it's not at a go position either. So it's struggle. It's toil in that neutral zone. And then we also have the uh, park mode. We know what park means. Totally, completely stopped. Now, you can be in the park mode naturally in the car. That car can be parked, but the road motor could still be running. Uh, so, it's still operational. But right now, because I got it in the gear of park, it's not going anywhere. Whether off or on. So, I could be outside the car and the car is parked, but it's still running. And I could get in and quickly shift the gear and I, I can be in that mode whatever I choose. And so park mode is a place where you are just 
standing still right there but the engine is still running okay and it's, it's at a stop level so why did I bring up all that I bring up all that to say that mainly that car is designed to be in the drive mode that's how they made it you want to go somewhere you want to move from your home to the grocery store you want to move from your home to work you want it to be in the position of forward movement okay but in forward movement there's times that things happen that we have to go into those other modes to accommodate uh, the flow of traffic traffic or to get us to our destination so when we're talking about our lives now we are supposed to be normally the way the Lord has designed for us to be. We're supposed to be progressing. We're supposed to be moving forward. We're supposed to be making traction. We're supposed to be productive. We're supposed to be effective. And we're supposed to be relevant. And and the appropriate uh, spiritual gear and the mode to be in is in the drive mode. But even in all of these specific modes, there's a positive um, uh, effect or a it could be a negative effect in all of these gears but normally in the positive way oh glory be to God y'all give me a minute my computer just did something hallelujah the devil don't want me to do this but you might as well go and sit down somewhere hallelujah so in the positive uh uh mode of driving that's the normal way that we should be moving progressing doing what he calls for us to do but but as we are driving there's various speeds various acceleration of how we are driving now uh, different things happening call for different measures sometimes we got a speed limit legally right how y'all know we do sometimes y'all know what you do you go over the speed limit not by five miles but by ten and more but we have a legal speed limit because they have designated that to drive safely and for everybody to be safe you have to drive at this speed so they have regulated you but we have the holy spirit as our regulator and he will let us know at the appropriate speed for appropriate project or for an appropriate assignment or for our lives where it, where it is right now or for what we are asking God to do do I go is it time for me to drive and move forward he says yes but there's a right speed because some people he gives you the green light but you put the feet to the metal and your acceleration is to way too high you're past the speed limit that the Holy Spirit is regulating. He said you'll get there. But you're going too fast right now. Some people go off in zeal. They go off in zeal. But it's not according to knowledge. And they're going too too fast. They're going too fast for their spiritual maturity level. They're going too fast. Because uh, to hear instructions and directions. They're bypassing the uh, spiritual traffic lights. That says it's green. I told you to go. But now it's time to look. There's a caution light. It's time for you to, to proceed, but still proceed with caution. And so anyway, in that driving mode, that's where we're supposed to be moving forward. And what a, so when you're in the driving gear, that is the in the aggressive or the assertive mode. It's in that energetic mode. It's in that determined mode. It's in your in the dynamic mode, and it's in that forward mode. That's where our life's supposed to be in the in that driving gear. That driving gear urges you to go forward and to go forward with force. And the only thing that slow you down is the regulator that the Holy Spirit is telling you at what type of speed to be driving that that is safe for you. Glory be to God. And all he's doing is saying that there's times going to tell you you're moving too slow. No, I told you to move a little faster with that. And and then there's times he's going to say you went way ahead of me. I didn't tell you to go that fast. I didn't tell you to go there yet. You understand what I mean? And some of us got to understand the difference when we're supposed to be moving and, and what speed we're supposed to be moving at. Because we may 
um, we make uh, foolish decisions when we go ahead of the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will teach you. He will lead you into truth. If we just say, hey, Holy Spirit, now, what are you saying? Um, you're in the driver's seat. You know where I need to go according to my assignment, according to my purpose. You know the plan that God has for me. You already know the way. I, If you lead, I will follow. And he will tell you, okay, yes, it's time for you to drive. And go forward but but you, but this is the speed you need to be going at okay then also let's move to the next one we're talking about reverse oh my my my, my. reverse mode it could be a little positive positive but mostly in the reverse mode is not a good thing even when that car as we talk about it's very dangerous to be going in reverse long distances and at high speed it is more for an adjustment mode but when we're in the spiritual reverse mode in our lives I denote that to a backsliding stage you're in that gear and that's a dangerous stage you you didn't just go a little distance you 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 you've been you've been reverse in reverse mode for quite some time the only time we should be reverse mode in our lives spiritually speaking that's why I said some of these are not uh, so parallel with the example of the car, but I used it to bring it up. But in the in our lives, in our spiritual lives, and in our natural lives, the reverse mode is not normally a good gear to be in. Because in the reverse mode, you're either in the backslip mode, or you in in a mode where you're going backward. You're in a sleeping mode. You're in a mode of non-action. You're in that mode of, I'm going to, it's time for me to rest. You have a sleeping posture. It means that you are in that mode of, of neglect or in that mode of not being used or utilized. That's not a good place to be. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the head. The Bible said in Proverbs that a man will come to poverty. And when we're in that reverse mode in our lives, we're almost in a backslidden mode. And if we don't correct it, uh, you know, God gives us grace. But if we don't correct that reverse mode, just like in that car, if you keep on going too first, you're going to run into some trouble. You're going to run into traffic behind you or you're going to run into that which is parked or whatever. Uh, so you got too many angles to look when you go in reverse. You can't go forward looking back either. Glory be to God. And so um, instead of we're in that uh, minor adjustment, we made a minor adjustment. And my favorite saying is this, even small steps taken in the wrong direction will get you to the wrong place. The same way small steps in the right direction will get you to the right place. So in this reverse mode, if you make the minor corrections early on, come out of your pride, humble yourself, say I was wrong, say I went bad, and you correct it, you'll be okay. But the problem is, is when it gets to the backslide, we don't, people think you backslide overnight. That is untrue. Backsliding is a process. It's meaning that you didn't correct that first thing. And so then you find yourself, you, you go back a little bit more and you keep backsliding until you're in a sleep mode. Your posture is that of uh, slumber. That posture is that that you're having non-action. Every time you seem to move forward, the Holy Spirit tells you drive, you go reverse. Because if you draw nigh to God, I mean come close to Him, He'll come close to you. But if you keep on drawing away from him, you ain't going to never get close to him. And in that reverse mode, that's what's happening. You're going away from him. That's why a lot of people are in this gear. That's why they say, God ain't saying none. He is. But you're, you, you, you are not close enough to hear. His, his hands is not short that he cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy, um, Isaiah, that he cannot hear. But your sins and your iniquities have drawn you away from him. So when you're back there, what what seems like God ain't hearing you and he's neglecting you and he's delaying, he's not, but you just can't hear now because you keep going back when you're in the backsliding mode and he's drawing you to come back to him. So backslide whoever you is, I compel you to come back to the Lord. He's married to you. But anyway, so in this posture that you maintain now, then that's what gets you to a backslidden state. 
So your backsliding, your reverse mode, your reverse gear that you stayed stuck in way too long causes you then now to be in a backslidden state. And, and that's the gear that I'm encouraging you to come out of. So in that uh, that that a uh, reverse mode also is acting in a manner that is opposite or contrary to that which is usual. So when you are backslider, you usually are co in contrary or in conflict with the word of God. Your flesh don't like it. You don't like it. You want to do what you want to do. That's what's wrong with the nation. We've been we we look like we're going backwards. Instead of getting better, we look like we're going backwards. Why? Because they refuse. To, to hear God. They wanted, they told God to stay out of everything of theirs. Stay out of our schools. Stay out of our government. Stay out of our homes. Stay out of our business. Stay out of my life, Lord. And we've gotten what we asked for. And what have we had? Chaos and mess. And so when we are in the reverse mode, we acting in that manner that is contrary to the word of God. We contrary to what is the usual way of obedience. It is the opposite of the opposite position of where we should be going, the opposite direction, the opposite of order, the opposite of our character, and the list go on. And so if you're in that reverse mode, it should be only uh, an adjustment or a momentary stage. And the only way it's positive to be in the reverse mode is the Lord has told you, back up, go back, and revisit that thing that I told you to do that you haven't done yet. That's the only time. That's the only time in our spiritual life we should be going that back way. Okay? And if you are there, no condemnation, get up from there, dust yourself off, ask the Lord to reclaim you. To rededicate yourself to the Lord and get back into the game. Get back into the dry mode. Then also we talk about part. Park mode. The, in the park mode, it's a place where you stop. The vehicle is temporarily just stopped. Um, and, and it has um, and been left in that position. And so in our lives now. In that park mode. So the car is no good. It's just park. It's sitting there. It's waiting for you to do something. <laughs> And so in our spiritual life, in our park mode, we get there sometimes. We park. We say, you know what? I'm not doing nothing. We don't. We ain't praying. We ain't reading. We ain't fasting. We just ain't doing nothing. We just in that park. Temporary park mode. Standing still. Bam. Done. <laughs> if we stand still, we're supposed to stand still, as Moses said, to see the salvation of the Lord. But if... God rarely tell us to stand still. No, he doesn't. He'll tell us to yield, stop momentarily. But I'm talking about park. You have seen, have y'all ever seen cars in your neighborhood? You say, I wonder who owned that old car. Now it's an eyesore to the neighborhood. Winter comes, snow been on it, piled up, rain come, rain on it. Dust all on it, leaves and came and withered and came, seasons and passed and gone, and that car is still parked there. Been there for umpteen years until it become an eyesore. And our lives, when it's in park, it, we don't come, no, we, we become no good to anybody, to ourselves, nothing to anybody else. And when you are in that park zone, let me see what I wrote down here. You are in that dormant state. You're in that sleeping stage with no action. You're just at rest. Glory be to God, you're in that neglected stage. Didn't I go off a park already? I think I did. But anyway, we're not supposed to be in that park zone. Get out of the parking zone. If you stay in, in even in your own neighborhood in front of your house, let that car stay there parked too long. You'll see the police starting to look at it. Sometimes they even give you a ticket. Because why? The license, because you neglected it. The license plate then expired. The, the, then the then the uh, window sticker is inspired in. Sometimes they think it's just an abandoned car that don't even belong in the neighborhood because it's been sitting in the same spot so long. We're not supposed to be sitting in the same spot spiritually. Uh, uh, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, none of that. We're supposed to be sitting in the park state like that. Glory be to God. It's time to shift gears. That's all Pastor Benny trying to tell you. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. And then we talked about the neutral zone being very dangerous. 
I don't know if I covered these already, but I, I, it's a little late, so I'm gonna. Um, uh, I've been at this a little while, so I want to uh, finish this, but I'm gonna give it to you all in the spirit of excellence. So, so the passive um, is the neutral zone. So passive is that complacent zone. There's that idle idle zone of gear. It's that lifeless gear. That's the place where you want to be impartial to anything. That means the place where you're dull, vague, where you are a tolerant of everything. You're just completely disinterested in it. And that's what happened with this, this last election. There's people who got so fatigued with it all and uh, neither of the candidates with they, their pick uh, because not, not not one uh, in the past or in the future or present have ever been 100% what we want. You just have to choose with your own conscience and take the Holy Spirit and then make your choice. But um, some, of our, some people have taken the role of I'm going to be in this neutral. It's the safest place to be. So if either one of them mess up I won't have no stake in the game because I didn't vote for either one of them. That is irresponsible and that is taking uh, the right that many people fought for and you should be. So then if something happened, uh, no complaint from you. You have no say in the matter because you became neutral. You didn't make a choice. So, you know, we, we know that there's a lot of unrest about this and and. People of God, I want to encourage you. I'm getting off the lesson a little bit. We have been double talking. What we have confessed in the past and what we've been saying and what the word says is still the same. I don't we understand that the times is crazy and it is crucial to get the right person in there, but but people are freaking. The church is splitting. They fighting each other. Races are fighting each other. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Because one disagree, uh, I mean, don't agree with you, whatever your choice, uh, and we're fighting, and the devil's laughing at us. Um, don't, you know, let them just fight against themselves. Let that the spirit of distraction of this, and it's four years, you all. I understand the severity of it. A lot of things can happen. But I'm saying, if we've been saying this for umpteen years, this ain't the first time this happened. It's been, it's been one or the other party in this office since the beginning of time, since the beginning that it started. And it's been those who've been righteous and unrighteous. And it's no different than in the biblical times. Some said things that they're going to do and they haven't done it. Uh, some say they stand for this and they... And, and we still have the problem that exists today. Glory be to God. And we are in the church. The, the world don't know how to do it. They, they do what only they know to do. But the church, we have to agree to disagree. And whoever get in there, why are we double talking? Why one president deserves us to be praying for him and we shouldn't be talking against him and we should be backing him up? And and, and uh, holding up those, and we quote those scriptures, holding up those in authority. But now you think your your favorite didn't get in there. Now that scripture, do you think it doesn't mean the truth? You still got to pray for them, no matter who your choice is. We got to pray for them, whether my choice is in there or not. I got to pray for them. This when he made that commandment, it meant to pray for them because all of them need to be put in the direction it they may be good and uphold the righteous cause in this way but in this other way they're not and i'm saying we got to pray that their heart will be totally turned toward the lord and toward his righteous cause and favor his righteous call in all areas so the reason that people became neutral and got in their neutral gear even with that situation is because they got tired and they didn't see a good alternative. But that's a dangerous zone to be in, to be neutral. Because it's the safe place. It's the place of complacency. It is the place where you uh, will become lifeless. Nothing bothers you either way or another. And that's why a lot of things that we don't like has become existing. Because a lot of us have stayed in that neutral zone. And we played that neutral ground so long and this is what we got 
this didn't just happen. This came because we took a neutral safe zone. Our voice now has been more audible in the church with this political campaign than ever I have seen in my entire life where we are taking the church pulpit time that we're supposed to be compelling the people to Christ the time we're supposed to be trying to win this lost souls time we're supposed to be encouraging the people of God giving them the word of God instructing them empowering them equipping them I'm not saying we're not supposed to talk about it we're supposed to talk about it and then move on but we have stayed here and some are still there even though the choices have been made it's not final because of the current situation of contesting it but they still are honing in on it spending their whole entire broadcasts and hours holding a full election thing on on spiritual platforms i never seen it before we supposed to be as spiritual leaders in our role we supposed to say what we got to say we're supposed to encourage people to do what's right and then leave it up to them to vote their conscience and let the Holy Spirit guide them. When we try to manipulate them in that way, we get into that same thing of trying to, to bend a person's will. We're supposed to say what God to say as the Holy Spirit give it and move on. But we, I don't believe it. If someone can prove me wrong, tell me I'm not proud enough, come down. But according to the way I read the word of God, I know I'm not wrong. But I'm just saying, according to the word, you want to challenge me and you want to show me something different. I don't believe it. He did call them. We used to want to keep the separation. We used to let them come and just say, hey, wave and pull. Now we let them take our pulpits, taking the time when the preach words was come on. We can't even let the people shout and dance. And when somebody is getting delivered, all right, now it's time for the word, time for the word. We want to shut them up. But then we let politicians come in our pulpits and spend hours talking to us. And they, they don't even claim to be Christians, but they're teaching us. Teaching us who's supposed to. Listen, I don't know how I got. I want to cut. I don't want to. Make this controversial. I want to talk about shifting of the gears, but I'm talking about that neutral zone, so it's applicable. But but you all hear what I'm saying. So when we take that neutral zone, it's a place of complacency. It's a place of non-resistance. It's that place where we can stay and play it safe. Glory be to God. So I'm saying, let's evaluate. It's time God told me to tell you all. It's time to get in the valuation mode. It's time to say, what gear am I at? How long have I been here? It's the same way as one of the lessons I uh, um, taught and cre uh, and um, um, and delivered, which was um, the difference in the seasons of our life. The fall, the winter, the spring, and the summer. Spiritually speaking, we get into either either season, knowing how to decipher the seasons and what the what's supposed to happen in those seasons and when uh, those seasons end, and then when it's time in our lives that we have to embrace that season until that time of that season is over. And so I'm saying it's time for us to evaluate and shift, shift our focus, shift our priority, shift our paradigm, and shift our agenda until it become into alignment with God's word, in alignment to our assignment, in alignment to our purpose, in alignment to the kingdom mandate, in alignment to what we are supposed to be doing. Oh, glory be to God. <clears throat> and so I think what I'm going to do is end this specific uh, teaching because I went a little bit more into depth of stuff as I was being led by the Holy Spirit than what I wanted to. I wanted to talk about Abraham and Moses today, um, but I know my my goal is not to keep you all too long. I don't know what time. I didn't time myself, so I'm, I feel like I've been going a little bit long. So we're going to uh, do this. We're going to um, uh, cut off part two, and we're going to pick up next week with part three. Come back, tune in to part three of Shifting Gears, and we're going to take you now to the scriptures. We're going to take you to the story of Abraham and take you to the story of Moses, and we're going to show you how they were in different spiritual gears. I, I can, I'm using this, it's not in the Bible like that, but for the sake of this um, 
sermon and the illustration I'm using. We're going to show you how they were in different gears and how they had to shift. And if they didn't shift, what would have been the consequences of them either shifting or not shifting? And we're going to talk about that. And we have more people to talk about. So again, just in case I didn't give it to you all, we're going to be doing this in three parts. We're going to be talking about the shifting of your focus, the shifting of your emphasis, the shifting of your tendencies, the shifting of your direction, and the shifting of our agendas. And then we are going to be shift shifted out of the 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 um the place where we haven't supposed to be into the very right gear that we're supposed to be in so you all join me right back here next sunday we're trying to do this you all please pray glory be to god my power went out it's just so much i'm not going to even bore you all with the details but please pray i know I know for a fact I'm called by God. Uh, it seems to me, I don't know, it may just seem that way, but it seems to me that a whole lot of other people that's preaching and teaching do it with ease and fluency, and it just looks like they don't toil. Not toil, but they don't look like they are hindered or whatever. And that I know that's not the case, but that's how it seems to me. But um, I can tell when I have a good series or or a right now word uh, because um, I'm attacked in multiple ways by the enemy in to, in to get this stuff I'm gonna say cause it to get this word to get this word posted and up if it's not the internet uh, it the power went out. it ain't the power it's the dogs that get in the middle of my um, taping uh, because we're virtual now, I have to do this, etc. So y'all come and pray with me, and we bind this demonic force. The word of God will not be hindered. Hallelujah! That's why I said, uh, uh, I pray that it will not be hindered by any demonic outside force. Hallelujah! Because the word of God is the thing that brings change in our lives. It brings clarity. It brings instruction. And it brings direction. And so you all come and join me back here next Sunday. And our our goal, once we get all of this figured out, we're calling in in our a new uh, service provider. Uh, we, we're going to work this out so that we can say 12, uh, 1245 will be when we will be taping our service so you can know when to tune in but until that time would you all do me a favor just hit subscribe so you can be notified on Sundays I'm talking about Sundays only when we will be live so um, we will um, be pushing for 1245 okay uh, but until then, just come back. And if you miss the 1245, then just come back and look at the service when you can. Okay? I do love you all. I appreciate, appreciate you all already. And thanking you in advance for doing so. I would dare not end without making the appeal to someone who do not know Jesus right now in the pardon of your sins. And you are not in the right gear. You are not in the right gear right now. We want you to be in the gear of driving, moving forward, being productive, uh, fulfilling your purpose. Um, the Lord who intricately wove you and placed you here in this earth didn't do so because he didn't have nothing else to do. He had a well-defined plan for you and a well unique purpose, a unique purpose for you uh, to fulfill. And he had created all of us for himself, but gave us the 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 um, free will of choice and he says I would that you would choose life so that you and your house may live but he's not going to force you but you are not in the right gear you are either in the park gear you're in the reverse oh not the reverse in the park gear or the neutral zone and it's time for you to make a decision it's time for a shift in your life I know you feel it. You've been, things been grinding and screeching in your life and you don't know why. That is because the most important thing is missing. Number one, you can't even get into any of those gears unless first you get the key to put in the ignition. 
and to turn that car on, then now you can shift the gears. The car, you can't even shift the gears. It's locked until you get the access, the key, which which turns the engine on. And then the engine gets signaled to the transmission. The transmission then operates by the gears you put it in. But now you, you don't even have the key to unlock. The people of God got the key of the kingdom of heaven. They got the access code. They are now able to put it in and 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 make that engine go so that they can go where they need to go in life and so but you need to make that choice to come out of that part mode and in that neutral zone into the, the the driving zone i mean in the driving gear i keep saying zone but in the driving gear and you can simply do that by accepting the lord jesus today the thing that is missing in your life is him You've been trying to do it on your own and it has not worked. You've been really struggling during this time. You're scared. You're scared of the virus. You're scared of death. You don't know when your time is. You're you, uh, afraid to go to sleep. You got anxieties, worries, and stress. And the list go on. But you don't have to have that. Glory be to God. All you need to do is fill that void with Him. And then get into the right gear. And you're ready to go. So, um, so if you're ready to make that decision, you can make that decision right now. We can get you saved in the next two minutes. And if you said, Pastor Betty, I desire the Lord. I've been thinking about it. My spirituality has come into question during these most uh, challenging times. And I've been wondering, is this Jesus real? Is what these Christian believers been saying true? And I've been feeling this this nudge and been asking Lord how how do I make a change how do I do this turnaround and now I'm here to tell you you've been drawn here so that you can get Jesus in your life so if you want the Lord in your life you can simply say it by making a confession and then by a belief and what belief is that so according to Romans chapter number 10 verses 9 through 10 let me read it for you it says that if you will confess with your mouth the lord jesus and if you will believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead you shall be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and that's how you receive salvation that's how you become born again that's how you become a believer it's just simply by two simple facts of believing that Jesus Christ uh, uh, that he was the son of God and that God raised him from the dead then by a confession confessing that he is Lord and confessing that um, that he is the Lord and he is the Christ and by those two simple things you can be saved right now right here today Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Are you ready to do it? Let's say the simple prayer. Dear Lord, here I am. You know me. You know how I've lived. I want you in my life. I feel the need for you in my life. I want to fulfill my purpose. I want to be in this driving gear that Pastor Betty talked about. Lord, I invite you into my life. I believe in you and I have confessed you and now by the confession of my mouth and now the believing of my heart that you are the Son of God I invite you in would you come and be Lord of my life would you live your life in me and through me now Lord I believe that I am saved now from this day forward I belong to you I give up the control over my life and I ask you to come and you be the Lord of my life. I come underneath your Lordship voluntarily. I thank you Lord now. I believe it. I receive it. I confess it. And I now say that I am saved. Thank you Lord for saving me. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that simple prayer my brother, my sister, guess what? You are saved right now. Then now, guess what's happening? There is rejoicing over you right now, right here today. And the Bible says, I'm going to give you all this scripture so you can go to I quote it all the time, but I never gave you um, the scripture. It says, 
in the, uh, give me a minute, Luke chapter 15, verse 17 reads like this. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repent more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So right now, heaven especially is rejoicing over someone who has repented, who has changed their mind, who have adhered to his call and is now... Um, uh, 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 aborting his errors and his misdeeds and determines that he's going to enter into this better course of life and have accepted Jesus as Lord. They are rejoicing over you. There's a party in heaven right now. I can see it. I know Pastor Betty, uh, it may not be, but the invitation, hey, they have announced it in heaven. Guess who? They're another one that gave their life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Jessica gave her life to the Lord. Sam gave his life to the Lord. Sally gave her life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so they are rejoicing in heaven. And your name is now being recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is the book that is going to be open to check your name to see who's going to gain interest into the heaven. Entrance into heaven who are going to have access to go into heaven throughout all eternity and your name is written there nobody can take it out mm -mm. no devil in hell can do so so i love you and if you have made that confession of faith and you receive jesus as lord would you do us a favor would you reach out to us and let us know matter of fact you can put in the comments say hey i gave my life to the lord on this broadcast or you can reach out to us at our email at klcc one two seven at yahoo.com said pastor betty i gave my life to the lord in your broadcast today and we're going to congratulate you we're going to rejoice with you and then we're going to be a vehicle instrument uh, to get you now planted in a full gospel church where jesus christ is in the focus the word of god is the highest authority and where it is good soil where no weeds will come and choke the seed of the word that has been planted in you right now here today. We're going to plant you in a place because now you did the first initial step, but there's other steps. So if you want to know what those other steps is and to you, for you to grow up spiritually, because you've got to grow up. You're a newborn babe or you are considered like a tender plant. You're new. You, you uh, Newborn babes have to drink milk until they can eat meat and then a, 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 a a new plant has to take roots and grow. The roots got to get strong enough to grip to that, that, that uh, soil and to germinate and then to, to bud and then to come to a full bloom. And so that's what the church is about. It's for discipleship. It's for teaching, instruction. It's for encouragement, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and to disciple you until you are mature and until you can grow up on your own. And then you can go out and then be teachers of others. And so until that time, we want uh, to give you more information about this new life. Now you need to know how to live holy. You do not need to know, know what the holy lifestyle is all about, what being a believer is all about. You got to learn about the uh, the the um, laws of God. You got to learn some things. And so this is the initial step, but we want to plant you in the church. Hallelujah. Now we know we're virtual right now, but people are still accepting people of the virtual platform. Hallelujah. And they're giving them the information and the tools necessary. We would love to have your Kingdom Life Christian Center. Yes, we would. We have a place for you. Uh, but if Kingdom Life Christian Center is not the place you want to make a decision now or later, that's fine. But if it's not for you, then we will try to help launch you into the place where you're going to be your best. Because at the end of the day, I would like you to be here. I want the numbers to be in my church, but it's not about numbers for Pastor Betty. It is about getting you into the kingdom because I'm going to get my reward for that. Um, but I want my the important part for me is to get you planted in the place where you're going to flourish and grow, where you're going to be your best, where you are going to reach your highest call and where you are designed to hear the voice of that shepherd and so that you he can lead and guide you and if i am your voice don't fight it don't get into the park mode when you're supposed to go ahead and say hey i'm gonna connect with that church so just listen at the lord where you're supposed to be but we just want to be an instrument and then we want to keep a record of you and we want to see how instrumental these broadcasts 
and these services are being in getting people into the kingdom. So would you do that? Just send us a quick email. Just say, hey, my name is James. Hey, my name is uh, Kim. And I gave my life to the Lord today. And then if you want to join Kingdom Life, say, my name is Kim. Or, my name is Jeff. And I want to join Kingdom Life. What, what what do I need to do? We'll give you the information. Okay. So all my script, love you with the love of Jesus. Pastor Betty tell you that all the time. And I so mean it. But he, the Father, God, loved you so much that he sacrificed his only begotten son that had no sin, was no not guilty on your behalf. He took on your sins and my sins, both past, present, and future. Isn't that good news? And that's how much he loved you. His love is so deep, so wide, so high, it cannot even be measured. I love you, but his love is not, can't, uh, the love of Jesus can't, human love can't come close to or even compare with. You all have a fantabulous rest of the Sunday and have a, a wonderful Monday. Don't come with this Monday blues. Don't get involved in that. Hallelujah. Don't jump aboard of that. Get out of that, that, that gear <laughs> of everybody saying it is a blue money. Make it what it is. Come get up with the eyes open for opportunities to seize and to fulfill your call. I love you all. I am Pastor Betty signing out. I am a pastor who's teaching kingdom principles for kingdom living. And our motto here at this church is we are loved by God. So guess what? We decide that we're going to give love away. We love you with the love of Jesus. And until next time, you all be blessed in Jesus' matches and wonderful name. Amen. So. Have a wonderful day now. God bless.